Hey guys, what's up? So, going off from my first vlog, now I'm on to my second. And where we left off was around Sunday afternoon when, when I arrived here in Madrid after a, after a pretty long flight and long travel. Um, I arrived here at around 3-4pm in my residence, in my, where I'm staying for, the, for this week. And this is what my, this is what my um, apartment looks like. So yeah, you can see it's got everything I everything I need for the next week, and it's a great room. It's just pretty simple, but it got everything, got got all the essentials that are that are required for me. And um, going off, I I arrived here Sunday. I needed to try and stay stay awake as long as I could. I was feeling extremely tired because I just travelled for thirty hours, and four p.m. in Madrid Spanish time would be around two or three a.m., possibly four a.m. in in my hometown in hometown in Australia so yeah it was tough but you have to I have to try and battle it out and I went to the gym to keep myself awake be active and that's a, that's always a great way to battle jet lag because you're you're getting active you're releasing energy you're staying and that's that's just a great way to stay awake and not fall asleep on the spot because if I had fallen asleep at 5 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. 8 p.m. then I could have probably woken up at 3 4 a.m. the next day and been in a lot of trouble with with just time difference and sleeping patterns. So if any of you guys have great suggestions or great tips to battle jet lag and deal with it, I'm open to all of them because even though I'm pretty experienced at doing this, it's always it's always tough when it happens. So yeah, thank you in advance. So the gym session, I, I'm going to show you some exercises that are for the legs and the core, core of the body, which are really crucial to table tennis, to table tennis players and being the main groups that are used in the sport. I, I do this every time I'm in the gym and, and I'm going to show you these two exercises that you can also do to improve yourself and, and improve your ability to use these muscles during the game. Now to the on-table training. So I came in Monday morning with a, with a fresh mind because I had a good sleep. I knew I had to adapt to a lot of changes. So changes from the other side of the world. So massive time difference. Also, it's summer in Melbourne, Australia, where I live, where it's about 30 to 40 degrees every day. Then I'm coming to Europe, Spain, where it's the winter. So about 5 to 15 degrees here every day. A lot colder. And even though Spain has a has a good winter and it's never that cold it's still completely different to 30 to 40 degrees so the result of that is my bats my rubbers are going to feel very different my rubbers are going to be a lot harder in the colder weather and it's just going to be a lot harder to to get natural spin and speed whereas when it's summer and the rubbers a bit softer it's almost like the ball just sinks in more and you can just get it's easier for you to get spin and speed when you just go for your shot when the rubber's a bit, when the weather's a bit colder and the rubber's harder, it's easier for the ball to go down and just not go anywhere. So that was one thing I knew that was going to happen. Um, I've struggled with it in the past, whereas in the first couple of days I, I really feel like I'm trying so hard I can't can't top spin the ball very well. But that's all part of it. And um, another thing I had to adapt to was the the change in training partners. So I've come here and I know I'm going to train with good players and I know I'm going to play good level competitions compared to Australian level partners where sometimes I play a good shot and the point's over, here it's just another shot for these players and, and they're always able to play that one or two or three extra quality balls back. So while that's fantastic and I'm, I'm really learning a lot and improving from it, it's also very tiring on the body. So now it's Wednesday night here and I finished, I finished the first three days of training. I'm extremely tired. So that's one thing for you guys to note you're always going to feel a lot more tired playing with better players than players that are not as good because they're just going to work you at a higher intensity they're going to they're going to hang into the points longer and they're also going to they're going to be quicker to attack they're going to put more pressure on you on the shots and um, and it's easy if it, they're generally on the front foot more than the 
the players that are not as good. So in my training in Australia, I'm generally playing shorter points because the players aren't hanging into the rallies as much. Um, I'm always on the front foot, whereas this week, for example, I trained with some good Spanish players, some good top-class Japanese players. Um, world number 58, uh, Spanish number one, Alvaro Robles. I, in the session, he was really pushing me. and He's, he's constantly moving me wide. And every time I play a good quality shot, he's, all, he's always back with another one. And that's, that's in a way surprising for me because I still live most of the year in Australia. And that's, that's the kind of players that I'm used to playing against. So playing against him, it's, it's what I need to, to grow as a person, to grow as a player, to learn more. Um, at the same time, it's a, it's a completely different kettle of fish. So yeah, I mean, it's fant while it's fantastic, it's also um, just, just very different. And so how much, should you, how much should you train with better players? How much should you train with players your, your own level? And how much should you train with players your, below your level? I think you need a good mix of all of them. So you can't just be training with better players because you're going to be a goalkeeper. You're always going to be on the back foot. Like when I trained with this Spanish number one, he was Robles. He was all almost always on the front foot against me, and that um, it's, it's a different type of training. Whereas when I'm training with players my own level, it's a bit more competitive. It's fifty-fifty, and we're all trying to we're all trying to take the front foot instead of when I play with better players. I'm trying to hang into the points. And when I play with players that are not as good as me, I'm always on the front foot, I'm dictating the plays, they're giving me uh, less quality balls that I also need to train. For example, they're gonna pop my serve up a bit more, and if I don't practice hitting against them in a match, it's gonna be hard to put those kind of balls away. So um, at, that, at the same time, training with players that are not as good gives you confidence, which, which you need coming into matches, and you just need as a player. So my answer is that you need a good mix of all, all of them. So you need to train with better players to learn and to, to pick up their patterns, know what you need to do to improve. You need to train with players your level, around your level to, to constantly be, be competitive. Um, and you need to train with players that are not as good as you so you can develop strengths of yourself. So to finish off guys, I'm going to show you some training clips that I managed to record over the last three days. I'm going to show you some, some good stuff, some good points where you're going to see the players just hang on to the, hang into the points more. And I'm going to, I'm going to play some shots where it, when I'm training with partners in Australia, probably that's enough to win the point and it's, it probably is going to win the point for me. Points done. But against these guys, they're able to play that ball back and it's just another shot for them. So them playing that extra ball back just gives me more work. And, um, and it just makes it a lot harder for me to win the points. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and hope you guys enjoy, enjoyed the video. Thank you.